well, we have to wait Hello. for a few minutes. Oh, we do? Yeah, because nobody knows how funny we are yet. <laughs> it's going to take a few minutes. Um, we, uh, what is this titled? I may not look like Oprah, but, oh, I'm interviewing with Patrick Allen from Network Funding. And uh, this is our second week um, to do something for National Homeownership Month. And this week we're going to focus on um, what is needed to purchase a home. So basically the lending side for home buyers. And Patrick um, does, does loans and um, helps a lot of my clients. And so we're gonna answer some uh, questions about what really is needed to purchase a home. Um, and that is my first question, literally, okay. So what is needed to purchase a home? We're kind of asking like a range of credit scores, maybe um, minimum time at a job, income, down payment level, what kind of, of those things are needed to purchase a home? Okay, um, so really like whenever you're getting a mortgage, you're really trying to like just, I mean, it's all about your, as far as like what income you need, like debt to income, really what you're focusing on. Um, so I have people all the time like, what kind of income do I need to purchase a $200,000 house? I'm like, it really depends. You know, what kind of debts do you have? Um, so you're really going to focus on your debt to income ratio, It'll play a huge factor on what you can afford. Um, and then as far as credit scores, you're going to want to have at least a 600 credit score. So you don't have to be perfect. I get that all the time. People would say, hey, my credit's only a 720, and I'll be like, thank you, it's a 720, you know? It's like, <laughs> well, yeah. then that makes it too easy <laughs> right. for you. Right. It too easy. Well, now what happens, like, can you, if someone has uh, a 580 score, you're like, well, that's only 20 points away from 600. It, I know on my side of things, I always try to encourage people, hey, talk to a lender sooner rather than later, because if your score is something like 580, maybe you can give me some tips to get it up to a 600. Can you do that in a six month period, you think? Yeah. Can you, get, can you get your score up 20 points? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, and you can run it like, because oftentimes like people that are in that like 580, even like 560 above, there's normally something like, that's really just holding down. It could be like a lack of like something, like a lack of, whether it's like revolving debt or they have- Oh, so they have to go much. shopping. Right. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which normally that. lenders don't yeah. tell you to do. We, we may get that credit card. <laughs> yeah. I may tell you to get that credit card, buy okay. it subway, and then uh, throw it away. But, uh, okay. but just, to, uh, just to add in that extra revolving debt so you can actually improve your credit score. Or you may have a whole bunch of open lines that that have too high a debt. And it could be, because in, in your credit score, whether you have a $3,000 limit on a credit card or a $300 limit, they weigh the same. You know? Okay. So like, if you have two hundred dollars on your three hundred dollar credit card, it counts the same as your two thousand dollars on a three thousand dollar. Okay, you know? so sometimes it's about like how much credit you're right. actually yeah, using. Right. Yeah, your, your utilization ratio is what you're. Okay, so don't max it out. Yeah, definitely don't do that. <laughs> okay, don't try to that. keep a little buffer on yeah. there. you really try to keep people under twenty percent of your of your utilization. Okay, well that seems drastic, sir. Uh, maybe forty percent. Right. Okay, <laughs> I'm just making up numbers that work for me. Um, so, yeah, you know, from a realtor's side, if for some reason there is something terrifying to home buyers about getting a pre-approval. And I think it's almost because they don't want to hear, like, about their finances. And right. it, it is a private thing, right? So on the realtor side, we don't know anything about anyone's credit score. We don't know anything about how much money you make. Literally, all I need to know as your realtor is what you're purchasing a house for and the percentage down payment, and that's it. Um, now, Patrick, on the other hand, he knows all that stuff uh, when he runs your, your pre-approval, but he's going to be looking at ways to find the best plan for you because not all loans are the same. I mean, there's like a million different types of loans. There could be a loan for like a firefighter, right? right? Or a loan for a doctor or a loan for an attorney. And it's really trying to, once you look at their financial situation, you know, plug it in and find the best fit for right. somebody, right? right. And whether your concern is, oh, I don't have that much money to put down. I'd like my monthly payment to be higher or I really would like to focus on a lower monthly payment and we, you know, put more money down. 
So, um, that's one of my questions was, what are your thoughts on PMI? And for those of you that don't know what PMI is, that's that mortgage insurance that you hear people talk about all the time. And there are a couple different types of mortgage insurance that you'll, you'll or loans that have different mortgage insurance that one goes away, one doesn't. Tell right. us about that. Right. So yeah, that's, what, that's one of my like biggest questions, especially with first time home buyers that they may have talked to their parents or something or read something online where they think that they have to put 20% down. Um, it's super, super rare for a first time home buyer that I ever see someone put 20% yeah, down. Yeah, and on our side too. Right. I'm almost never writing offers with 20% down. Yeah, I mean, it's super rare. So I mean, it's absolutely possible and, and way more common than, than you may think. Um, but your PMI, really what PMI is, it protects the lender from default. So if you never made a mortgage payment, they'll never get paid back a portion of, of their loan that they've outstanding balance. So it's it's based on It's a, an insurance package, yeah, package insurance, for the lender. It's an insurance package for the lender. Um, and it's based on your credit score and how much you put down. Uh, your loan program um, also plays a factor in, in how much mortgage insurance you have. Um, the difference between, like say, like an, an FHA loan and a conventional loan is a conventional loan, say like your higher credit scores, that's going to be your like 660, 680 pluses. Um, credit score wise, and then yeah. well, we call those fancy people. No, we got fancy. People. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, and then your FHA is a little bit more lenient on your credit scores. They're, they'll go down certainly to 580, 600, just depending on the strength of the file. Um, but the difference between the two in, in mortgage insurance is FHA, you'll have it for the life of the loan for all 360 payments. If you never sell or refinance, you keep it for okay. all three years. You will have mortgage insurance for for the life of the loan. Whereas conventional. It'll ultimately fall off once you've ultimately paid 80% or 20% yeah. of the loan off. So if you put 5% down, once you pay off an additional 15% of the loan, you won't have PMI any longer. Okay. And let me point this out because a lot of buyers come in for buyer consults and they actually think that they're going to be living in the same house for 30 years and that never happens. Um, we are the, and I cover a, a range of age demographics in my clientele, but for the most part, we're we're kind of under the assumption that when a new iPhone comes out, we go out and buy a new iPhone, even though nothing is wrong with our last one. And that's really how people are with houses these days too. People kind of say, at the max, people are staying in their houses for five to seven years. Um, I think, especially in the city, which a lot of my business is, uh, you know, in the city, um, really inside the beltway a lot of and we sell a lot of starter homes to first-time home buyers so they are in starter homes to start but they're not there forever so a lot of times people um, ask me um, as their realtor they'll say hey I got two quotes I got an FHA quote or a conventional quote which route should I go I don't want to have mortgage insurance for a million years um, and I'm saying, well, you're really only going to have mortgage yeah. insurance for five years because you're buying a one bedroom condo or a one bedroom or two bedroom house and you're eventually going to have kids and you're going to move out of that house. Right. And so no one really, if you are buying something to really stay in it for 30 years, one, you're probably lying to yourself because you won't be there that long. Um, <laughs> Because I feel like I know more about your living situation than you do, but um, and two, you're you're going to um, <coughs> just have to weigh the options on conventional versus FHA. FHA, you can put less money down though, right? Than conventional, or is so it can, the same now? So yeah, you can do conventional at three percent down, and an FHA oh. would be three and a half percent down. Okay. Um, but oftentimes, like that PMI, like the greatest factor in it is credit score. So if someone has a 660 credit score, their PMI on a conventional loan is going to be a lot higher than it would be on an FHA loan. So like, so yes, a lot of people are like, oh, I hate the idea of it being on there for 30 years, you know, but like you've already said, it's like, they're people, not gonna don't, live people don't live in your house for 30 years. Yeah. Doesn't, doesn't and happen. it's just one of those expenses that come with being a homeowner. I mean, honestly, um, it's just it, like people are so afraid of this this boogeyman of uh, PMI, but really at the end of the day, when you look at what you could be purchasing or your purchasing power, you're 
you're either paying it to rent and so you know someone else right. you're paying off their mortgage or you're paying off yours and it's a small price to pay to be able to put a lower amount down um, keep more money in your pocket for emergencies or rainy days and then you know pay what what's the lowest mortgage insurance you've ever seen on a file and what maybe I don't want to know what the highest is but I mean, what, what's the lowest or average is there an average I mean, like a hundred or so. Like okay. Three, like a three hundred thousand dollar, say a three hundred thousand dollar late loan amount. Your PMI, like good credit, probably a hundred. A hundred dollars a month. And now that you've all got rid of cable, you've cut the cord on cable, and you're all streaming stuff on Netflix. There's, there's your hundred dollars right. a month, right, <laughs> right there. Um, okay. Um, how does credit not being perfect affect rate and ability to get to the loan? Um. What kind of options can you give me to improve my score quickly? Um, so we kind of talked about this, but <coughs> I think people just don't know that there is ways to assess their credit um, report, look at the items that need to be addressed or, you know, or not be addressed. I accidentally once paid off an old debt that I shouldn't have, right. and it like dropped my score like 40 points. Uh -huh. and. I was pretty pissed because I paid my bills yeah. and then yeah. I was like, wow, that, that was apparently going to disappear next year. So it really is smart if, if home buying is on your horizon over the next few years, if that's a goal for you, to talk to a lender sooner rather than later because they may be able to look at it from a lender perspective and say, these are things that matter, these are things that don't. If you're going to focus your efforts somewhere, focus it here, and that's um, you know a better way to spend money. Yeah. So how um, kind of talk about like like I had no idea about the rapid rescore thing right. and those fancy stuff, but like what do consumers need to know about getting their credit up? Um, so I mean I'll, I'll re reiterate what you've already said. It's like I really I really do think it's smart to like talk to a lender sooner rather than later if you're looking anywhere in the next six, 12 months, even beyond, you know, if you, if you just want to get an idea of where you stand and we can really make a good game plan of, of how you're going to get into your house, right? Um, cause we're all on the same team, you know, like I want you to get in your house. I, you want them to get yeah. in your house. We're yeah. all on the same team. Yeah. Here. You know, if I'm not going to like, I don't want to just, I'm not going to look at your file, deny it and send you on your way. You know, we're yeah. going to make a true game plan to actually make your home ownership a possibility. Um, so as far as like, like rescoring and stuff like that that's that's more of like you can do it like you can get them updated directly at the credit bureaus yeah in five seven days or so if you oh, have wow. something that's that like, like if we just paid needed off, to take yeah care if we paid off like quick. a collection or something yeah. that's going to boost up your credit if we paid down one of those credit cards that had a high balance and we paid it down we can get it instantly updated at the credit bureau level versus waiting organically which you're doing effectively come every 30 45 days or so okay um, so how hard is it to apply for a mortgage? Do I have to give you my blood type? <laughs> Do I need to go in? Yeah. Hair follicle? Anything like that? Or like, what do you do and how long does it take and how consuming is it for, for buyers? Because they are all afraid of doing it for uh -huh. some reason. I'll have 10 conversations with the same person like, all right, go get a pre-approval. Okay, let's go get a. Right. You're like, crap! You haven't gotten that pre-approval yet. Right. What are you afraid right. of? Right. So what what is it that you're doing that's making people so scared? Yeah. That? So we'll definitely need blood type and uh, hair <laughs> follicle, cool. right? Okay. Yeah. CSI stuff. <laughs> right. Right. Uh, uh, no. So I mean, it's really my process is I like to fill out. It'll be a short borrower questionnaire, and it probably takes the borrower ten minutes to knock out. We can do it over the phone, online, um, and then. I will gather your most recent 30 days pay stubs, uh, last two years W-2s, and tax returns if we need them. So like if, okay. if you're if you're a W-2 employee, 99.9% .9 of the time. But you if don't you're me, them. you're gonna you need are, my hair follicle. If, if we are you, if you are self-employed, we do need to uh, invade your private space a little bit more than uh, than you would. Yeah, um, yeah. And then there's a copy of an ID. And then uh, after we filled out that, I like I really like to set up a lot of like in-person consultations or uh, over the phone. We do some video. And just really kind of like walk you through the process so we can really choose like what loan program is yeah. right for you because like you said there's a bunch of them out there yeah adjustable rates conventional you know fha yeah veteran loans you know we, all we do them stuff. all so, I mean, yeah 
I really want you to show like a what you would qualify for, and b like like what closing costs would look like because that's another like misconception of people that they think that they just have their five percent down and that's that's all that exists, right? Yeah. Um, what do you personally think about interest rates? When I mean, we all I think we all at the end of 2018 were like these babies are fixing to rise. We could be homeless, mm -hmm. you know, it could be a real a crap shoot. Yeah, yeah. But I think that, I think that during the government shutdown in January, we started to see like, well, you know what? We're not gonna focus on rates. We got bigger fish to fry. Mm -hmm. And now I read an article yesterday that said rates are the lowest that they've been in a long time, yeah. right? Yeah, probably since 2016 or so, if I was gonna guess. I'll and let me tell you what happened in 2018 from a realtor perspective. Is I'm super passionate about home ownership. Of course, it's how I make my living, but I've watched a lot of young people make a lot of money just by simply living where they live. Um, I've watched young people stop renting, stop throwing away money, building equity. Next week, we're going to do a focus on homeowners who are like doing projects around their house um, and really taking advantage of the equity in their homes. Um, because it's a lot easier for me to resell homes that have had some things done around. So I'm passionate about home ownership. And in 2018, as we started to hear on the news a lot about rates rising, um, I kind of wanted to choke people I talked to a little bit. I was a little bit violent because, you know, I'd always get like this kind of cocky client that would come in and be like, well, rates are too expensive now, and I'm, and and I gotta wait until they go down. And you're like, I don't know where you've been for the last five years, you idiot. But it's it, this is going to run out. You know, the rates being as low as they are, we've had a great run for a, a really long really time, long. so long that now it is considered the norm. Um, but at the end of 2018, I really thought that we would be well into five, over 5% 5 interest on home loans. We still have people who are getting four, some people under four on certain things. You've got, you got to have that good credit for that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, um, and do a little bit more aggressive loans. But, you know, um, to, the, to the buyers who are like, it's always like this one guy, like, you know the type of guy and he like comes in and he he you know reads the news and he knows everything about everything and he's like well rates are 4.10 now so i'm just gonna keep renting for five more years to wait and you're like you're an idiot you know that right um because this really has been a great run of low interest rates and it seems like this year we're gonna have a great run but eventually they are gonna go up and that's just gonna be the name of the game um, so if people are thinking about home ownership I really encourage them to, to get on it over the next few years because it's gonna be it's gonna go up right right I mean and whether you're renting or you own a house you're paying someone for you it's either your landlord or your own you know? yeah yeah um, I say that all the time I use that line all the time, actually. I know. Well, <laughs> and it's funny to me because I am, I am pretty confident about what we do and who I work with and, you know, my referral partners. And, and I'm confident in what we're selling because it's good stuff, right? And so, it, and it's good for the homeowners. It's good for people I know and love. There's nothing more aggravating to me than when I'm sitting at a dinner party and the four people who act the most arrogant about where they are in life are renters because I'm like mm, no 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 you're <laughs> no if you're still paying someone else's mortgage then you know that I don't think that works too well yeah. there are some people that it absolutely works for and um, and like like I get it when people first move to the city they need to figure out where they're gonna be for a while. So if you're gonna be here for a reasonable amount of time, it's time to get in the game. Houston's um, economy just keeps getting better. Um, people are building equity. I mean, I um, I sold a lot of first time home buyers. I've been doing this now eight years. 
eight years ago, I did a lot of rentals. Those people all bought houses. Now they're in their second houses. And I'm having people walk away at closing with anywhere from $20,000 to $150,000 in equity. It's crazy. Yeah. Just for, for living. living. <laughs> Just for living. <laughs> <laughs> and it depends on where you are and what you do. But, you know, that's what I pride myself in. It's not very often that you take a 27-year-old first-time home buyer and they just live somewhere for five years and I get to go back in and sell that house for uh, after they pay me to do it um, on the selling side um, they still are walking away with fifty thousand dollars right and I'm like well I am going to go ahead and pat myself <laughs> on the back here I hate to toot my own horn but toot toot um, and uh, what um, does a buyer have to pay you anything for you to run a pre-approval not a dime okay not a dime. and you get paid when a buyer closes on a home loan Correct. right yeah okay so yeah, and I get paid when a buyer closes on a home a seller pays me it's a hundred percent free to use a, um, a buyer's agent in Texas and um, so we are just we're a good discount little right little team here right. we're free that's why i say we are a team because we <laughs> both want this one in the clothes, you know <laughs> yeah and well and you know that's the fun thing about home ownership there's a lot of stressful stuff patrick is going to ask you for like 500 documents that you should have probably organized better and you're not going <laughs> to know where they are it's not always easy but the goal is to work with people who make you laugh a few times along the way. I may talk a little smack to you and say like, hey, come on, get in your paperwork. You're supposed to be doing this stuff. We got to stay on target. Um, so that's the goal of, of home ownership with us. Is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, not, really. not really. Now, did you feel like I was like Oprah today? I, I mean, I feel like I'm sitting right next to <laughs> <laughs> to Oprah herself. Right, yeah. Oprah herself. Right? Well, yeah, yeah, once I once I leave here, I'm just gonna go, you know, you throw money a, around. You get a house. You get. A house. Everyone gets a house. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm trying to do these interviews, and I'm I'm feeling very Oprah Oprah like. So let's see. I probably have 50 viewers. How many viewers do you think Oprah has? 55. Something. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Not much more. No, no, no. More. we're almost the same. Um, all right, guys, thanks so much for watching. And then next week, um, our third week of National Home Ownership Month, we'll do another video um, focusing on some people who are actually building equity with their houses. Thanks. Thanks, guys.